Hello and welcome to Lee Stafford Education Online Live Masterclasses. My name's Lee Stafford and I'm going to be your host today. And as usual, guys, there's no such thing as a silly question. We certainly won't make you feel silly for any questions that you ask about the recipe that you're watching, about any other recipes, about anything in the hair world. Me and Dania are here today to answer any questions that you may have. So um, please keep them coming in the chat box. Um, so without further ado, uh, we've got a very special uh, staff with us today. Uh, hello, Dana, over to you. Hey Lee, hey everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, it's a pleasure to be here once again. Um, today we're going to do a mashup of a couple of recipes. We are looking at our root recipe and then we're also going to add a little bit of an express ombre slash balayage to the recipe as well. We know what it's like in the salon where Either a client springs something on you after you've already started the service or they want to squeeze, they ask you for something that you they're not necessarily booked in for. So this recipe that I'll show you today or the, my mashup of our recipes will be a really, really good example of how we can fit something in in a small space of time but still get a decent result for what we need. And, yeah, to kind of tick all the boxes and to go above and beyond our clients' expectations. So... And we're going to start with um, our root application. I know that you have all been working on this probably quite well and a seasoned root tinters. So what I've done today is I have already pre-coloured three quadrants of our recipe. Um, again, you guys are pretty cool with all of this now, I'm assuming. So we've kind of gone through our three quadrants, applied our regrowth or our root application as per our recipe. I've got our final um, root quadrant to colour for you guys today. Um, and then once we've applied that, we're going to go through in a, um, a diagonal section pattern. While the roots are on, we're not going to leave the, um, the roots to develop and then apply the color. We're gonna do apply the color straight on top of that. So in the salon, if we were to rinse all of this off and then dry off and then go through and reapply, it's gonna take us a really, really long time. And our clients, you know, we wanna be able to add services at the same time, be quick. As Lee always says, time is money. So we wanna be able to make sure that we can um, do as much as we can in as little time as we can. So as we work through, we're gonna work down our sections within our final quadrant on a diagonal as we go down the head. Then when we finish that, I'm going to go through and show you. So we're going to work on a pivoting diagonal section. So we're gonna start through the hairline at the front and we're gonna work on our triangle shaped sections that we use when we're doing our ombre. The thing that will change with these is they're gonna become wider, which then allows us to be able to cover more ground and color more hair opposed to doing really narrow sections through here. So we'll work our way up. We're gonna do three in each of the quadrants. So we're gonna do three in our right, three in our left. Um, then through the back, I'll show you through here. We're gonna do one on a diagonal through the back, one on a diagonal through the other side, and then one using both um, quadrants on top to bring this through. It's really nice to show you on something that's short opposed to something that's long. A lot of the time we tend to do an ombre on really long hair, um, but with our one length above recipe minus the fringe, it's really nice to show you how we can add pops of color in through here without having to do a ton of work. So any questions guys? Remember there's no such thing as a silly question. Um, we're gonna work our way through our roots. So just stick with me. And if you have anything you need to ask, please feel free to ask anything at any point in time. And we're here to, yeah, answer them away. Hello, Jamie Lee. Thank you for popping on. I've noticed you're on here before, so it's really nice to see you always active. Thank you. So Dana, on that quadrant you're working on now, you're going to do the roots just like you did on the other three quadrants. Absolutely, yep. The roots just exactly the same as we do as our Lee Stafford, um, as our recipe, as our roots recipe. So we've worked the way through there. Um, it's really great if you've got a client that's got grey coverage where we need to then go through and cover the grey hair to make sure we've got 
coverage really nice and saturated. Um, and then we can then go through and just apply some pops of color through there with our ombre balayage techniques that we're gonna work our way through. So Tracy Richardson says, how long would this take you to do in the salon, this service? Um, I would say this service could take anywhere between half an hour to 45 minutes. Um, you do have, you may have some time for toning afterwards if you need to. Um, but if you've got a client who, yeah, you can, you can pop your roots on really quick. So imagine we're back in the salon. We've done this recipe a thousand times. We know this inside and out. So we know where we can push our boundaries and work quicker. We can work and then we can get our roots on really, really nice and quick. And then we're going to go through and apply the, the balayage ombre pieces through those ends. What do you do in the event of a larger than usual regrowth? Um, in the event of a larger than usual regrowth, what we could then do is apply our regrowth first or we just smudge down a little bit further. The, what will happen is if our regrowth is larger, so say we're working on kind of a, what, a few inches opposed to our normal kind of two centimeter, six week regrowth, um, what would happen is when we go to apply our um, our pre-lightener for our or freehand for our ombre, what will happen is we're just going to be a little bit more restricted to how high we're going to go because we don't really want to merge them two together because we still want to have the coverage from our white hair um, or we still want to make sure that those roots are lifted as they need to be. So we're just going to, if that's the case and they've got a longer regrowth, we're just going to apply the colour just through those ends. If they've got a really long regrowth, it's probably a service that you would then want to pre-color their regrowth first and then go through, rinse it all off and then go through and apply the color, um, your ombre on afterwards. This technique is meant to, is like designed to be an express service. So ideally you wouldn't want it to be making you do any more work than you have to. So I think it's a great part of doing your consultations and working out what the client actually needs, what the results are. Um, this is quite a nice, quick recipe. What mistakes do people make when doing a um, routine? What do mistakes? I think taking their sections too large um, and the saturation of color. So the amount of color we apply while um, we're taking our sections. If we don't apply enough color, what can happen is sometimes the um, the roots end up looking patchy. If our sections are too large, again, they will tend to look a little bit patchy as well. Um, the other thing that could be tricky is if you, when you're laying the hair over, so say we're working on this front quadrant right now, if we're going to then lay this hair over our back quadrants that we've got to keep it out of the way, we don't want it to color any of the ends through there as well. So we're just going to make sure that the hair is elevated and it's not getting squashed onto any areas we've already pre-colored. Do you um, do you put like um, any kind of sort of Vaseline or anything around the hairlines? Absolutely. Any... Yeah, yeah, we have um, a color protector. So when we're using um, like darker colors, we tend to then go around the hairline, add a barrier cream on there. So if you do have a little whoopsie and you kind of go a little bit lower than we should we know the barrier cream is going to do the job and it's going to save us from having too many stains around the hairline i would say when you then go through and to rinse your color it's really important to then making sure that we're taking off all of those stains at that point as well we're not doing it when the client's sitting back in the chair in front of the mirror where they can really see you trying to give it a good old scrub to get that mark off as well so mm. definitely preparation is key for sure and tell me this, is it a bigger problem for you as a colorist when someone comes in with a big regrowth if they're blonde or if they're dark? Um, I would say if they're blonde, it is definitely a lot more work as a colorist because you've got something that is called your heat band. So your, your body radiates heat. If we're going blonde, it tends to, the heat we all know as heat, um, tends to lift the hair a little bit quicker. So if we're working with someone that's got a longer regrowth, what will then tend to happen is where the this body temperature stops, um, you will find that the color won't lift evenly. So the application for a root then is slightly different than what it would be normally. Amber Rowland says, what's your favorite coloring technique? Oh, 
Great question. Do you know what? There's so many different techniques, isn't there? How do you even choose one? Um, I love the technique that we're going to do today. Any kind of, um, I love colors that tend to be quite soft and harmonious within the hair. So they're quite subtle, they're almost quite hidden. Um, so I would say some of the freehand techniques are really nice as well um, that we can do. You know what, it depends on the haircut as well, because sometimes the color technique can totally change depending on the haircut that, you, that you're that you working on as well. So sometimes it's, yeah, I think it totally changes all the time, but definitely at the moment, the freehand is definitely is one of my favorites right now. Where are we? We've got a question from Vaughn. It might be a slightly different question for a virgin hair full hair application. Do you colour away from the root first and then later towards um, or one shade darker on the root? Great question, Vaughn. So what we would do when we're working on a longer regrowth, we are going to work through the hair um, and we're going to apply the colour two centimetres away from the root. So we're going to apply on that mid band first. And then after we've done that, after we've worked on the whole head, um, we're then going to go back through and apply the roots through there. So that the hair where the heat band um, stops working, we then need a little bit of extra time for that color to lift, to lift evenly to work with the rest. So that's why we're going to apply that mid area first. And then we're going to work back through and then apply the root on there as well. I hope that answers your question. Please send through some more questions if you've got any. So Jamie Lee Curtis says, so when doing this service, do you apply the root first, then wash and add your lightener, or do you do the roots, then lighten the hair at the same time? So we're going to be remembering time is money. They're squeezing in a service that they haven't really asked for or we think, oh, my gosh, I really think this is something great on the client. I really, really want to do it today. What yeah. we then need to do is we need to keep it as quick as possible. So by doing everything at one time. So we're going to do the roots today and then we're still going to come through straight away before I've even rinsed the roots off. The roots are now starting to develop. I'm now going to go in and apply my lightener. What do you do though? If someone comes in and you, and you want to do the colour on colour on them there and then, but you haven't done a skin test, I mean, is that is that very frustrating? It is very frustrating um, because if they haven't had a patch test or a skin test, um, yeah. the policy in our saddle, and I understand the policy um, for lots of insurance companies, the um, the colour houses, all the different brands that we use, we do have to patch test beforehand. So if no patch test is no colour, it's a really, really strict policy that we have. Um, there are things that you can do. So if we haven't patch tested, we um, we could potentially pre-lighten somebody's hair. We can't patch test for using, for using a pre-lightener or a bleach, but we do um, need to patch test if we're using a toner or anything else on their hair. So there potentially is a small window of a service that we could provide. But ideally, you want to make sure if, when, with us in our salon, we tend to make sure we patch test everybody, whether they're having pre-lightener or anything, just to cover all of our bases. Um, so, we legally, want so legally, you don't have to yeah. do a patch test for bleach? No. There's no way that we can patch test a dense bleach. It is just a colour, like an oxidative colour that we, we patch test for. Um, sometimes you also need to be careful. We also need to patch test when we're using, um, say, purple shampoo. It's always good to go back towards your manufacturer's instructions um, and then follow all of their, their rules that they provide. So um, we're just making sure that all bases are covered because you don't want someone to have a reaction, you haven't patch tested, and then before you know it, they're on the phone saying, I've had a reaction, I'm blown up, and then insurance said, oh, it's just going to be a nightmare. Thank gosh we've not had to deal with any of that yet because we're very strict with our patch testing. So, yeah. I remember when that first came out, Dana, and, uh, God, the stylist hated it because, you know, in the old days, literally someone could walk in, you could talk them into a colour, uh, and you could do it there and then, you know, all of a sudden yeah. the patch testing came in and, you know, all of a sudden you've got to rebook them in another day. And that hour you had free, that day that you could have fitted them in. Oh, it's so frustrating. Yeah. This is it. 
this is it and i think that comes down to as well like i mean we would then do the haircut maybe and then get them booked in for their color it's crazy when i worked in australia we didn't have to patch test either so it was only since i started working in the uk um that we've then needed to patch test so um yeah i totally can understand that frustration as well i couldn't believe it when i first started but at the same time i definitely understand oh, how I absolutely and i think it just we're, we're looking after the client. Ideally, a client wants to know that they've been looked after and that they've been cared for. And I think that's such an essential part of our service to them as well. It's just being honest and making sure that, you know, we're looking after them as best we can. It's to their benefit, you know, not just ours. All right, guys. So I'm going to work through here. So we're going to take our first section. So I'm going to work from the top of the ear to... just in front of our, just behind, back from my hairline. So we're going from the top of the ear and we're going to work back into our centre um, parting through here. What I'm going to now do, because we have got colour on the root already through here, I'm just going to use a little piece of foil to pop over our back sections to make sure that we don't end up with any colour on our ends from our root colour through here as well. I've got a little towel by me so I can just make sure I'm wiping my pintail comb at top of points when I need to. Um, I know that I've worked my way through the root through here, so I'm gonna have some color on my pintail. So I then don't wanna make, I don't wanna apply that through my ends. So as we're gonna work through here, we've got a very wide section that we're going to work on. Can you guys see all of that? Is that okay there? Yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm then gonna take what we would have like a triangle section from below that. So the little triangle section, so we're just going a little bit deeper. So we're going to be finer at the sides and we're gonna have more hair kind of in that middle section. But being a little bit finer at the sides, it just allows us to get a little bit more saturation through the color there. So we're giving our little wipe of our pintail, we've got our board. So I'm gonna hold my board in one hand. I'm gonna hold my Hair I'm colouring in the other, loading up my board with our colour. And then I'm going to work on the middle first. So we're loading up the hair in the middle section. Really important, guys, when we're doing any kind of free hand, that our tension is really tight. If our hair is too loose, what we're going to find is, is that we're going to end up just kind of messing the colour up in certain areas. We want the tension to be really nice and tight. So we've got almost like we're working on a board, essentially. So loading it up in the middle, bringing it high to the sides to give us our V shape. We want to have a really nice soft blend. I can feel my tension dropping through those sides. So I just want to re-pinch those pieces of hair. You can see as we're working our way up through the top, like our ombre recipe is, we're going to apply more colour through the middle and then we're fading our way out as we get to the top. So we're having less colour through these areas. So we've got a really nice, soft, subtle blend through here. I'm meeting where our root tint is. I'm not going any higher than that and I'm not merging it all the way through the root. So like you were saying, if someone's got a longer regrowth, where do we stop? Um, you're gonna stop, you are almost restricted to stopping where you've applied that regrowth in there. So that would just be a discussion and I think with your client as well at point of consultation, just to show them you know, what is possible and what you can do during your time in the service. What we wanna make sure is, is that we're not over promising the client too much and then under delivering by not getting the results we want at that point of consultation. So definitely just be honest with them, talk to them about what is possible um and then work from there if it's not possible guys like please tell them it's not possible like there's so many times where we try and and please and do as much as we can at that point in time and and we can't get there for whatever reason we know that but i don't we need to then pass that on to the client and let them know that as well so we've worked through our first section through here um, I'm going to apply a little bit of cotton wool just under the hairline. Again, we're talking about client comfort. We want to make sure that they're not going to have any color on their hair at all, um, around their face or anything like that. The hair is going to slightly lay just over the side. We want to make sure that we've looked after them as well. So a little bit of cotton wool on the hairline. We'll just stop 
you getting any color on the forehead more than we need to. Hey, so, Jamie Curtis says, what do you do if the roots color bleeds into the lightened part of the hair when washing it off? So say when the root color bleeds into the lightened part of the hair when washing it off, I would say um, it's normally not much of a problem if you've got a darker root, unless we're working on hair that is very dark. So say like level um, three, four, one, two, anywhere around there. But because we're using a freehand technique where the hair is going to sit in the open air, what will happen is we're not going to get like a tremendous amount of lift. So we're not like we're working on areas. These hair, it looks pretty heavy and dense in color now, but I can tell you by depending on the oxidant we use, depending on um, how dark or light the hair is, we're going to pretty much just get some really soft sun-kissed pieces. So when we're working on darker levels, we know that we're not then going to be able to, the hair's not going to lift to like a really, really blonde, like a level nine or anything like that. So as that root color washes off, it will actually work um, quite nicely, you know, as to kind of almost pre-tones the hair before we then apply our toner afterwards. So that's not a problem, basically. Basically, long way of saying it's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> no worries. So as we go through our next section, we want to cover as much ground as possible. So I'm slightly straightening up my um, diagonal section. So we're going to pivot from the same point we've just used previously. You see that where you're pivoting from? Uh, yes, like of course. Can. Yep. Let me spin her around for you. So where we're pivoting from, it's going to be just behind our hairline so we're about one centimeter back from the hairline pivoting from that point it's just going to give us some really nice pops of like lighter color that tend to come through and um, lighten up around the face kind of like a little face frame awesome so let me go through here so remember, we're only going to do three on this side and then we're going to do three on the other. So I'm going to work from um, one side at the front and then I'm going to work. So I'm going to work on the left and then I'm going to go through and work on the right. So I just want to take out just a slight little V section through here. And we're going to come back through again with our board. Don't forget your boards. Tension is super taut in three here. We're going to load our color up in the middle. And then we're going to work our way towards our regrowth. Keeping our tension really nice and tight. So we're almost feathering the color into our V. And with this technique as well, we want to make sure that we're adding saturating the hair really really nice and evenly so that we can get an even amount of lift and it is going to be a surface color so by saying that it means that we're not saturating the hair the whole way through that section um, by not doing that it just allows us to have a really really soft um, result as we get to the ends we're going to pop our ends on our board away from our color that we've just loaded on and bring our ends through and laying that flat down. So Bob's saying, if you do that way, two inches away from the root, don't you find that it's difficult to do each section when you apply root color as all the color might stick to the rest of the hair? That's a great question. Um, what I would say is I tend to start at the bottom um, and the underneath, and then I'm gonna work my way up to the top. And then you'll bring everything back down again. As you work through, you tend to, when you get really good at your regrowth applications, you can almost go through and pre, like the way you've applied the root, it's definitely easier. You can go through and pick those sections in there and bring that over. I write another really nice way of applying the color through that mid um, band is if you're using a board as we go. So we can apply the color to our mid band in our board. Um, sorry, on our board and then leave that out. So you will find that it definitely isn't as tricky as what you think it's going to be. The more practice you have, the easier it gets, but it definitely doesn't get through. You'll be surprised how much the color doesn't kind of stretch 
onto the rest of the hair in there. I hope that answers your question. Awesome. So as we go through our next section, still pivoting from the same area through here in the, um, the hairline. We're slightly just coming back on this last section. Remember that we've got a one length above. So um, all of these layers, well, there is no layers. All of these lengths are going to sit over the underneath lengths. So by making this super quick is we don't need to color any of the underneath hair at all. Um, this is just working on those top layers of hair there. So I'm leaving out a very slight section just on my um, parting there. So I've got a little tiny bit of hair that will cover over and just sloughly act as a bit of a veil to make sure then that I, it kind of helps just keep it really nice and natural and soft in there. So taking our V section through here, coloring our last piece through the top. Loading up the hair in the middle. And then working our way to the root. Depending on how high or low you take this will then change your result as well. So if you're wanting it to be really soft and just having the tips of the ends colored, what you will tend to do through here is you'll probably just keep your V that little bit longer. So you've got more color coming through those ends. Laura says, how did your first experience with any color technique go, Dana? Oh, I would say it's like any new experience, anything new. It's never the best the first time around, but it gets better each time after that. Um, <laughs> I, do, you have, do you have any bad experiences where you made some big mistakes? Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I've mixed up the wrong color before. Got my roots mixed up with my ends. <laughs> One minute I've got someone's end color on their roots. Thankfully, I haven't had anything too crazy where I've mixed up black instead of blonde. Um, I have made the mistake of mixing up some color with another stylist um, in the color room <laughs> to then picking up her color and applying it instead of the color I was meant to use. That was a fun mistake. I've definitely made highlights too chunky. <laughs> Got color of the bleach someone's eyebrow once. That was fun. You bleached her eyebrow. Yeah, I dropped a bit of colour on her face, didn't I? I wasn't very neat and tidy at that point. I thought I had to get right in there, <laughs> mix it all up. No, no one was harmed during that process, so <laughs> we were lucky. <laughs> all right, guys. So we're coming back through our sections in the front. We're working on the other side. And as you'll see, I'm going to show you through here. We're literally just working. I can see a little bit of color on her face here. So let me give that a wipe with our color wipes, that our stain remover wipes that will get all of that off. It's good if you've got any marks or anything on the hair, um, on their skin that you get off as you work through the hair, um, opposed to at the end, because the, the color will just start to develop and it'll be a lot harder to take off. So with this section through here, I'm actually leaving all of this out. So all of the underneath is going to be darker and then we're just putting pops of color that are coming through our top sections through here. We're not really going to see a lot of this underneath because we it's all the rest of the hair is going to lay over those sections. Some of these darker areas are going to work really well to give us dimension in the color. So it's really nice not to color everything or go too over the top with your application. Move her back a touch. Oops, sorry guys, I've got a long piece of hair in my brush. Let's get that out before we start. All right, let's load up the color again in the middle. We're gonna feather our way up to the sides. You'll find one side will definitely feel a little bit more comfortable than the other, depending if you're right or left-handed. Um, but the more you do it, the easier it will become. And that just, I think, comes down to your body position. So when you're doing the roots, 
like you've done today and then doing the balayage on the end. Is this normally from so, for somebody that is going, wants to cover the grey? Um, I would say if they have got, if they need to cover the grey, yes. Um, also, if their root is, if their colour is slightly darker than what they have through the ends, it's a really nice technique as well. If you've got someone who um, there is semi permanent, say for example, they don't have any grey hair to colour, they like being a little bit deeper in the root, but then just want a little bit of some sun kiss kind of lightness through the ends, especially now coming towards summer. Um, it's a really nice way to just add little pops of colour. You don't necessarily need this to be blonde. Um, this technique you can use with any colour. So say, for example, if someone is, um, where are we? If someone is blonde all over, like a scalp bleach, for example, they want some pops of colour to come through. Um, you could then use this sectioning pattern and technique after you have rinsed them off from their pre-lightener on their scalp um, and then apply pieces of colour through the ends, whether it's going to be a pink or a red or blue, anything like that. It's a really nice way of adding darker pieces into the hair as well, um, opposed to lighter pieces. So it's a really, really versatile technique that you can use with any colour, just making sure you've got your colour theory right. You know what you want to do. You know, you know if you need to cover grey. You know if you want to um, add some darker pieces or some lighter pieces through there. But you can use this freehand technique with anything, not just a pre-lightener. So remember that like your ombre that we do in the recipe. I know Lydia did one where she did a fantastic recipe previously. I don't know if you guys have seen it, where she actually used some brighter pieces of colour. So there were some pastels and everything in there, opposed to using a pre-lightener that was really amazing as well. So um, it's quite nice to have a technique that you can use in a number of different ways. Cool. Let's keep going, guys. Keep working your way through. This is slowed down extremely for you. So if, again, we were doing this in the salon, it would be a little bit quicker. You don't need to add as much colour through here if you don't want to. Um, you know, less is sometimes more as well. We don't always need to have these huge transformations each time. Um, we find after a while, you know, a client's hair might not be able to hack it anymore. Um, it's quite nice to just have a softer, versatile technique to be able to use with that as well. And it's also as well, like, um, going back to, like, your consultations and everything too, like, it's a really nice way if someone's booked in just for a regrowth and you think, do you know what? I fancy doing something a little bit lighter on you today. I reckon that we can go through and you might suggest to them to add a little bit of pop of colour around the face. This is a really easy technique that you can add a few extra pounds to the client's bill, keep your boss happy. You know, you've done an extra service. You might then be able to then add on a treatment, add on a toner. Before you know it, your bill from is gone from just a regrowth application to, you know, a number of different services added on top. From that point then as well, it's really nice to be able to talk about their, um, their home care at that point as well to use. Um, just plant the seed in the beginning. A consultation is a really, really great part of a service that totally gets overlooked, in my opinion. And would you talk about the products in the consultation before you even do the hair? Absolutely. I think it's a great way to, um, to plant the seed initially. You know, I think um, in our salon, what we tend to do is we would have a chat with the client about what their results are, what are their hair expectations, and then from there set out their home care. Do you know, do they are they going to need a treatment? Every client is going to need a treatment. Who doesn't want their hair to feel better? Um, you know, so they, I think it's a great point to start off in your consultation before you've even touched the hair. We will then give them a quote of how much their hair is going to actually cost um, before we then move on to their home care. So we tell them the shampoo, conditioner. I don't overload them with too much stuff, but it's great to plant the seed and then you follow, you know, throughout your whole service and keep recommending your products. When we get to the end of the service, um, at that point, I then like to, you know, make it as casual as ask them if they want a coffee, as natural as possible. Would you like to take anything home with you? This is what we've used on your hair, blah, blah, blah. So from the beginning to the end, it follows the whole way through their visit. And with this kind of balayage technique you're doing, you are you doing this just at the front or will you do, be doing it at the back as well? I'm going to pop a couple of pieces through the back to keep it balanced. You don't yeah. always have to, but the one I'm going to show you guys today, we're just going to pop a couple of pieces in the back 
just to keep it really nice and soft so we've got like a really lovely um, blend of color the whole way around. You could, but again, with this technique, depending on what the client wants, um, you could then adapt it to wherever you need it to be. So I've got a, I've got a competition question for everyone. Um, when we first partner with a college and college trainers, one of the first things we do together is Avada. It's like a two week, three week training session where the staffs and myself and the college trainers we all work together every day for two, three or two or three weeks, uh, working on all the recipes and all the Lee Stafford education coaching methodologies. Well, at the end of every one of our training days, um, the college trainers get sent an anonymous monkey survey from Lee Stafford Education. And we ask the college trainers 10 questions every day. Um, and these the 10 questions are things like, out of 10, how much did the staff inspire you? Out of 10, how much do you want the staff to come back uh, and present more training. So there's 10 questions that we ask uh, college trainers every day of a two or three week VADA. So my competition question is, what percentage of them questions, each college trainer, so far we've done 300 days of VADA, so that's nearly a year of VADA, and every single day, every trainer, is given a monkey survey, they have 10 questions every day to answer. What percentage of all of those questions, so if you can imagine each college trainer, um, let's say there's 10 on a course, so they have three weeks, that's 15 days times 10 question a day, I think this is right. So that's 150 questions that the college trainers get asked in one bar, and we've done 300 days of them. What I know, I know I'm going around the houses here, guys. But the competition question is what percentage did we get nine out of 10? Over nine out of 10. So, did we get 20% of all those questions? We got nine out of 10 on average. Was it 30%? Was it 70%? And so on and so on. What percentage of all those questions that we asked did we get over nine out of ten? Does that make sense, Dana? It does make sense, yeah. Where did, I, did I get there in the end? What percentage did we get over nine out of ten? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there you go. So that's my that's our competition question this week. Sorry, Dana, carry on, Hunt. No, absolutely. Um, it's a great competition. So that's, I mean, it's interesting to know how, how what did we did get, what percentage it was. I can't yes, wait. So we're sending out a goodie bag of least staff, or we should say a goodie box of least staff products to the person that is closest to the right percentage. Amazing. You always fit more in a box, guys. Get in there. Cool. So let's work through our um, our back sections now. So we've got our back quadrant. Again, we're going to leave out quite a lot of hair underneath. We're just working on the sections of hair that are around kind of like the top. So imagine if we had um, a little horseshoe that kind of went, went around from the temple all the way around underneath the crown to the other temple. We're basically working our way through on a diagonal through that to um, pick out some pieces of hair and give it a color to give you some of that soft sun-kissed lightness. So through this back section, what we've got through here, we've gone below the crown. We're going to then do our triangle shape section as per our ombre recipe. We've got a wider section than what they not generally are. And then we're going to work through here. So we've got one section through this side and then we're going to work on, whee, the other side, sorry guys, those sound effects come for free. Um, then we're going to work on one through the opposite side. Where are we? On our diagonal. And then we're going to do one that sits on the crown through here as well. So let me show you through this section. So do any of you guys love the ombre recipe? I think it's quite quite a good one. Do you use it a lot in the salon, Dana? Absolutely. Um, yeah. 
Absolutely. And I use it quite a lot. Um, when I when I first joined Lee Stafford, I was given the challenge of doing one of the recipes, um, having to film myself, just like all the college tutors, sending it in, <laughs> getting marked, and then working out if I was going to be successful enough to do this or not. And I did this ombre recipe for then, and I think it's been one of my favourites since the very, very beginning. So it's definitely a good one. Cool. Fonz asked me to ask that question again. I'm going to try to simplify it. Okay. <laughs> so what percentage have we got, Lee Stafford Education, for all the Vardas we've done, all the days of Vardas, all the... Uh, monkey surveys that college trainers have filled out. The question is, what percentage did we get an average of over nine out of 10 for every single question, for every day, for every trainer, for every VADA day we've ever done? Was it 20% of all those questions we got um, over nine out of 10? Or was it 30? Or was it 50? Was it 90? Was it 99? What percentage did we get nine or over out of ten? Is that is that made it clearer, Bon? <laughs> well, we're getting some percentages through. Yeah, we're getting loads of percentages through. Oh, 99%, guys. Thanks. That's a high one, isn't it? That's a high That's one. High. Yeah. So really, that bit you're doing around the back, you're just doing a little bit just to balance it, really. Absolutely. Yeah, this is it. Um, so most of the colour, I mean, we're thinking about what does a client see? We're doing this on a shorter style. So this is on our one length above. Um, what do we see the most? Normally, what we see is what is around the face. So that's where we have most of our focus is going to be on these front pieces. Remember, because it's a freehand or an open air technique, guys, this is going to be soft. It looks very heavy, very obvious now, um, and looks quite contrasting compared to the rest. Um, but I can guarantee you, because it is an open air technique, it's going to be a lot softer than using anything that's incubated in foil. Um, not saying that you can't then, once you've got this down, that you can transition it into using um, foil or anything as well to give you more lift but it is going to be very soft. So most of the color for this is going to be through the face, um, but the back section we're coloring now is just to give it a little bit of balance. So we've just got some softness the whole way through. They've been on a great holiday. Do you know, they've been out for a good while in the sun. We're hoping, let's, let's hope this year we can get out. <laughs> so we've got our section. So we're going to below the crown. This section is going to meet out other section that we've done and we're basically going to mimic this same piece through here on this side oh my gosh more percentages more percentages guys i'm glad you think we're pretty good this is awesome mm -hmm. we're getting like 85 percent 87 <laughs> cool so we've got our next section. Underneath, I'll show you through here, we have, I don't know if you guys can see through there, we've got our triangle shape section. So it's deeper in this middle and it's shallower through both of these sides. By being a little bit shallower through these sides, the color is going to almost saturate that hair a little bit more. So we're going to get a little bit of extra lift in the sides to give us a bit more of a ribbon or a pop of color. And then we're gonna have less through that middle but as we apply the color through those ends, it's going to be more saturated to give us extra lift in through here. So the end result will be something that has got some really beautiful bright pieces on each side or brightish. And then we're going to feather it softly through the root to keep it softness in there as well. So we still want to be able to see some contrasting color through there. Remember, it looks crazy. Your client might freak out a little bit because you think, oh my gosh, what are you doing to me? All of a sudden, I had a one all over one color. Now I've got stripes of color. You can assure them it's not going to be stripy. It looks a bit heavy right now. It's going to be really nice, soft and subtle, giving you those sun kiss vibes for the cooler months. All right, loading it up through that center. Moving our way softly. 
up through our sides, giving it that really beautiful V shape through there. As we come through those ends, I will show you through the underneath. Underneath, we don't have any color at all under there, which is really lovely. We've got our soft subtleness on each side. If you have any lumps or bumps underneath your those sections, I would suggest that you work on taking them out now um, and refining your application. If you leave it to the last minute or you don't check underneath at all, you will find that you'll probably have splodges of color underneath there, resulting in an uneven finish. So you don't want the client to have little spots of color the way, the way through. So we're keeping it really nice and soft the whole way through there. Cool. So we're going to work through our last section. So we've got each quadrant. We're then, now we're going to join them together. So our final section that we take through is going to come from the middle. So we're going to leave a teeny little bit of hair out over the top. This is going to act as a little veil. So when we do our section through here, this is going to sit slightly over the top, diffuse that line to make sure that it all blends in really, really nicely. It also keeps maintenance for the client low. So this section through here, coming through on our triangle. Taking out our triangle section through here, working our way through our center. This is going to sit really, really nicely between our two on each side. This is gonna give us a really beautiful bit of balance in there. I'm spin it around a touch so I can apply this color. So we're working out. Oh, sorry, Lee, keep going. Oh, I think I've interrupted you. I apologize. What was sorry, what was that, hun? I think I interrupted you. I think we we're both about to say something at the same time. No, go on. No, I was just going to talk you guys back through um, our application. So tension is really nice and tight. So that pair is really nice and tight. It's almost like we're applying um, the color on a board. Elevation is where we need it to be. So we're not going to go too low. We want to elevate slightly up so we can see we've got the hair separated from the hair underneath. So loading it up in the middle, working our way to each side. Feathering it in that center, keeping it nice and soft. We're gonna check out underneath as we go through. We're all safe under there, nothing through here, perfect. No lumps or bumps, if you do have any, get them out straight away. And then we're going to apply the ends on the board and just to bring that all the way through. And we're going to come and lay that flat. And then we've got our final piece of hair that we're gonna leave out that as that sits over the top, it's gonna to sit really nice and diffused over the top of that section, just to keep it really nice and soft like we've done through the front. So I'll recap for you guys so you know where we're at. Unless you've got any questions through here as well, I'm more than happy to ask, answer those. And remember, like Lee says, no such thing as a silly question. Absolutely not. I can show you all the way through here. So we've worked through on our diagonal sections through the front, pivoting from our point at the, just behind the hairline, about one centimeter in. Same with our other side, all the way through here. So we've worked three sections through here and then come around. We've left that little bit of hair, like our veil, just over the top that's going to keep mm. that all really nice and soft. Working our way through the back, we've got our one on each side and then one through the centre, which will just give us a really, really nice piece of balance in there as well. So we're then going to let that all develop for the same time, say, that your regrowth allows, um, which then also then limits where how much lift we're going to get. So remember, it's a, an express technique just to give some really nice sun kiss results. Um, or the alternative is if you're using something that is darker, it's going to give you a really beautiful piece of depth that will work fantastically um, with our one length above. Going darker will add like a bit of a shadow through the hair, so it will give you lots of strength through the baseline of your haircut, making it look really nice and strong. 
um, where something when it's a little bit lighter, I feel in my opinion, it softens it slightly. So it gives you a much softer result through there. What you would do is after you have let that develop, um, you would then go through with your toning. So um, like we do within the ombre recipe, you're gonna apply the color with an S shape, milking it through and then leaving it to develop for the desired, for the, the length of time that you need, depending on your desired results. Um, do you want to see our finished yes, results? Please. Yeah, let me grab her. Let me switch heads over. It's quite nice to see um, an ombre or a balayage done on something that's short opposed to really long hair. Um, we never get to see much of this. And I think on a bob or anything like that, it's just such a great technique to use. So, guys, this is the finished result. I'm going to bring her a little bit closer. I've just done our um, some tonging on here just to keep it with a really nice kind of texture. It's really nice when you're styling out something that has got um, some pieces of colour through um, in a technique that does have some waves or something in it because it just allows you to just see those little pops of colour that come through. I feel like I'm going backwards. Looks right, looks lovely. Looks very yeah. stylish. So we've got the the colour that will come through, just kind of giving you a few more pops. These pieces are really pretty in through here. I feel like I'm doing this in the mirror. Sorry, um, but yeah, even through the back, it just kind of sits in there really nice and softly. So it's just a really nice alternative to add mm -hmm. a little bit of color. Um, working with commercial timings as well in the salon to keep it all looking really nice and. Very fresh. good, Dana. It looks really very very nice indeed. Thank you very much for that. Thank that you. Very well, very well explained. Paula said. Uh, oh, thank you. you. <laughs> uh, Jamie said it looks beautiful. Uh, looks lovely from Laura. Again, a lot of love here, you know. Um, yeah. And it was amazing and very commercial. Um, lovely colours. Well done and thank you. That's brilliant. Well done. Uh, and just to let you all know, the winner of the competition uh, was Jamie Curtis. 93% of all our questions we got over nine out of 10. Not wow. bad, no. So um, Jamie Curtis, if you get one of your college trainers to um, just send me an email, uh, let me know what your hair's like and I will get a goodie bag out to you along with Amanda Babb. So that will all be happening this week. So thank you very much, Dana. Thank you very much for all tuning in. Uh, it was lovely uh, to uh, get all your questions. Um, and we shall see you next week, two o'clock. Uh, next week, I think we are doing a graduated Bob, a twist on a graduated Bob. So all have a great week. Uh, Dana, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Take care of yourself. Um, we'll see you all soon. <laughs> Ta-da. Bye.